I'm looking to apply September, 2019. So she's looking to apply this fall to start next fall. So that's probably the position I think that most students are in right now where they're going to be applying this coming cycle when applications open this fall. So the question was, when do I recommend that she take the LSAT? Whenever you're ready, honestly, I think that you can take the LSAT this summer in June or July and apply this fall. You can take it in the fall, one of those three dates, September, October, or November, and apply this cycle. Any of those would be fine options. You could even take it in January, 2020 and apply to start law school in the fall of 2020. Now, applying earlier is relatively better, all else being equal, but I don't think you should rush it. You should apply when you're ready and take the LSAT when you're ready. So right now, we're in April, of course, you've got two months till June. If you've done virtually no LSAT studying so far, I think June is probably gonna to be too soon. And I would suggest instead going for the fall. You've got about five and a half months till the September LSAT. And I do recommend, like I said, studying over a five to six month period. So that would work out perfectly. You start, you start now, slowly building the foundation first. Then you go for taking it in September. And no matter what, I would still say, take it in October and November as well if you have time to study for those LSAT test dates, because there's no downside. You do worse, law schools take your previous higher score. You stay the same, obviously it washes out evenly, but if you do even a single point better, that could lead to thousands of dollars in scholarship money or getting into a better law school. So that additional retake, it's really a no brainer in my opinion. And I don't know why more people don't do it. I think they're maybe discouraged by the idea of taking it again because it's obviously not fun to be studying for another month or two and having to go to the test center and whatnot, or maybe it's the app, the registration fee for the LSAT, but a $190 registration fee, if it gets you a single point more on the LSAT, a single point more is worth $4,000 to you now on average. The analysis has been done, $4,000, and that could be more scholarship money or getting into a better law school. And so the ROI on that over the course of your entire career is enormous. So I would say definitely take it multiple times. There's really no reason not to. So if you're going for the fall, you've got five to six months. And so I would recommend a longer study timeline. Like I said, 10 to 15 hours per week. You break it down to three phases, accuracy, then pacing, then endurance. Accuracy, untimed, building the foundation first, doing LSAT questions by type. Second phase is pacing, doing individual timed sections. Finally, the third phase is endurance, doing full length five section timed exams. I would recommend over a five to six month study period using exams 52 to 61, 62 to 71, and 72 to 81. Then the individual timed exams from 82 to 86. Now I have LSAT study schedules on my website where I lay out exactly what I would recommend doing over the entire course of your studying. And so I'm going to pull those up now for you on the screen to show you what they look like. All right. So we've got the study schedules here. This is the page with the study schedules. It's, and I'll, I'll share the link with you in the chat. We've got one month all the way through to seven months and a retake plan. I have the free week by week ones. Let's say I'll, I'll show you the three month because that's typically what the average amount of time people take. So you see, I've got month one week one, week two, week three, week four, and so on all the way down the line. But then I have premium day-by-day -day study plans as well, where I get even hyper-specific in exactly what to do every single day over the course of your entire studying. And so those are premium day-by-day -day plans. They're 20 to 25 bucks, depending on which ones you get. And they are my most popular LSAT prep resource above all else. So I would definitely recommend making the investment again 20 bucks on your LSAT studying is really a no-brainer. I'd highly recommend it. I'm sharing the links for you in the chat there if you would like to find out more. So that's the biggest thing I would recommend is just how to structure your studying first. Accuracy, then pacing, then endurance. Now, if you're taking the LSAT this summer in June or July, the same overall structure holds, but instead I'd recommend focusing more on the exams in the 60s, 70s, and 80s, maybe not doing as many of the older ones. So those are some thoughts there on how to structure your LSAT studying. 
I think that most people have a hard time fitting in the time if they're working or in school. And so if you are working or in school, think about how to block off time specifically in your schedule. Maybe you do an hour before work, an hour during lunch, an hour after work, or if you're in college, treat it like a six credit class, block off some time each week. If you're using Google, Google Calendar or a planner, really chunk off the time, a three hour stretch here, a two hour stretch there, put it physically in your calendar or else it might not happen. And back to those of you who are working, I'd say if you work in an office, maybe you can find a coffee shop nearby. Maybe you can find a conference room in the office, but get there early. Maybe you wake up at 6 a.m. or 7 a.m., get, get to work by 8, work starts at 9 or 9.30. You have an hour there alone before everyone else gets there to get the studying done. And then, of course, in, in the evening, you do the same thing, stay at work, stay in the conference room, or find a coffee shop nearby. But once you get home, of course, it all falls apart. You get into your comfies, you, you have Netflix in front of you, you, you have the fridge in front of you. And then of course the studying ends up not happening and it's also later at night and you're tired. So I'd say knock out the studying while you're still fresh before you commute home. Now, if you are in the very fortunate position of being able to study full time and you have someone supporting you or you have savings, that is amazing. And I envy you for that because most of my students are not in that position. So if you are, I'd say max five, six hours a day. You wake up, you shower, you work out, you eat breakfast, you go for a walk, whatever. You then study from 9 a.m. till 12 p.m., take a break for lunch, then study from like two to five maybe, or shift it around a little bit, whatever works for you. But again, three hours before lunch, three hours after lunch, that's the maximum that I would recommend. Any more than that could lead to burnout. And you also want to have frequent breaks all along the way. Now, back at that schedules like I sent you, I also have a few resources for how to fit in the time. I'll share those in the chat for this class as well for you to have some additional ideas on how to actually fit in the time. But don't do it too early in the morning because you'll be tired and a little groggy and you won't get the full benefit out of it. Same thing goes for if you're too late at night studying, you're tired, you're not going to be at your best. The LSAT is hard enough that it requires your full dedication and attention. And so if your energy is even a little bit off, you won't get the same result. 